most women it's not sex that we're looking for when we cheat it's an emotional connection it's always like something like emotionally like that you're not receiving from a man it's just the 80 20 mm -hmm. he might be doing 80 percent of everything you need him to do that 20 percent, it can be sex whatever the case may be but even if it's sex you're not looking really necessarily just for somebody to have sex with you're looking right. for someone to build an emotional connection with so that you can have good sex with them and then go from there and if you, you make that move and then you take that next step and now you have an emotional connection with somebody else you yeah. have sex and now you really like this other guy yep. but you're in a relationship and it's not so, smart this is why i don't think people should cheat right at this big age of 31 i'm understanding this right whatever you were missing in this relationship that you're in is still missing it's not being worked on it's not right. getting better and now you're just cheating and getting that 20 percent for somewhere else so now you're prolonging this relationship that you could step out of and yes. go find you like a good honorable situation let me ask y'all a question right do y'all think when a man cheats and when a woman cheats, it's the same thing. Do y'all think it's the same? I want to say it's not the same. But then I know somebody's going to come out there and say, damn, that's a double standard. When men cheat, bro, we just trying to bust a nut. We just trying to relieve some stress. When women cheat, it's, it's some emotions involved in that, bro. That's why you see dudes be going crazy out here. A couple of days ago, me and my wife got in an argument. And we li we literally got in an argument about some stuff that happened when we was in college. And it was some shit that she did that, you know, even though I have forgiven her for it, every once in a while, you know, we might get to talking. And I might start reliving that shit. And this happened about 13, 14 years ago. You know, after the argument, you know, we kind of calmed down and we got to talk. And I'm like, yo, you know, any relationship you're dealing with, with any female, it's a level of psychological trauma that comes with that. And she agreed. That's the crazy part. She agreed. That's how I knew, like, all right, I'm not tripping. In order for you to be in a successful relationship with a woman, as a man, it comes with psychological trauma. She's going to put you through all these hoops and all these hurdles and she's going to make all these these wrong decisions that you going to have to put up with. Because of that and knowing that, I feel as though some men are just scared to get in relationships because they don't want to deal with that. You in a relationship doing every doing 80%. 80% and she'll throw the whole relationship away searching for that 20. Instead of telling you what the 80 the 20 percent that you're missing. Yo, in school, 80% was passing. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro, when we was in school, 80% was passing. Okay? Now, whatever the other 20% is, help me. Shoot, help me with 10%, because nobody is perfect. Help me. Help me get to 90%. I think 90% is a good number. That 10% is going to give us something to work on. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give us something to work on in our relationship. Give me something to strive for. Nah. I'd rather go out there and give myself to somebody that don't deserve me. I think asking me my body count is the quickest way to talk yourself about some coochie. Because I absolutely am not giving it to you after you ask it. And the, the, this, this weird obsession with having a low number doesn't make sense to me because, like I said before, at the end of the day, do you want a surgeon who's only done one surgery? No. Nope. No, you don't. You want a surgeon with experience, yes or no? So when you ask these women what's their body count, you're looking for someone who has a low one, and then all you're going to do is run back and tell your homies about how she can't suck dick, how she can't arch your back, how she can't do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Why? When you can have a woman who knows what she's doing is going to be able to please you. So can we stop this whole weird, weird obsession with the low body count? It's not real. It's not sustainable. You don't really want that. Well, we're going to tell the truth because we talked well, about not it. Not for nothing. The, it's not. Uh, listen, I'm going to say this. I said this once before. I'm going to say this again. It's your fault. <laughs> what did we do? Y'all lied about y'all numbers and made us think it was real. I've never if, lied about it. Well, I'm just saying, if, the, if women did not lie about their number, and whatever number is y'all, real average, it would be more acceptable for us. But when we heard three... <laughs> when oh, okay. we heard three all our life when you say seven it's a little shocking yo American culture has programmed us to accept 
um, women with high body counts. It's not okay for you to... When I hear that you have a high body count, I feel as though you don't value yourself. Because coming with a high body count means that you gave yourself to a whole bunch of men that didn't deserve you. You gave yourself to a whole bunch of men who I know didn't work as hard as you probably are going to want me to work to be with you. What's in the past is in the past. No, it's not like them niggas is dead. Them niggas are still walking around here. Don't nobody want to wife something that's not special. The fact that you have a high body count, that means you're not special. You're not special. As a man, we want something special. We want something to be like, yo, that's mine and nobody else had it. And that's not going to be that's not going to be the case in American society where it's like that's mine and nobody else had it. Hell nah. Your girl is coming with history. You feel what I'm saying? So now we kind of settled for okay, if you're not coming as a virgin, it's cool, but I want to make sure that like you ain't coming as a serial killer. You feel me? In places like like Iraq and 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 freaking uh, Afghanistan and nigga, they want virgins. Motherfucker gonna come. Hey, uh, Mr. Muhammad, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you these three cows for your daughter. Um, just make sure she's a virgin. Fair trade over here. Your father ain't giving your pussy up for no cows or no sheep's. You have the choice of who you want to give your thing up to. We know that as men, like, she had her choice to give it, give it up to whoever she wanted to give it up to. I just want to make sure that she was not here, you know, catching too much bodies. And I feel as though that's acceptable. Yeah, what you going to tell me is none of my business. It's none of my business about your body count because you're embarrassed. Because you're embarrassed. Point blank, period. you embarrassed. If you wasn't embarrassed about your body count, you would just say it. What does it matter? Why does it matter? Hey, man, the amount of people you dealt with in the past can tell me if I'm going to have a future with you. Like, why is it you keep sleeping around with so many dudes and nobody wanted to lock you down? That's what that tells me. You just out here deflowering and devaluing yourself for every man you come across and none of these men feel as though they need to lock you down? So why do I need to lock you down? Fuck your sexual experience. Like, why do I need to lock you down? Because I'm going to be real with you. You coming with experience is cool, but at the end of the day, as long as you have an open mind, that means I could teach you something. Hollywood is the devil's playground. Where do I even begin? Several people have sent me this TikTok and asked me to share some of my experiences. So here you guys go. I literally lived in Hollywood for two years and all this random shit happened to me. When people say Hollywood is haunted, they are not joking. The amount of paranormal experiences that I experienced living there. One time I was in an Uber. It was late as fuck at night, maybe like one or two in the morning. We are on a hill, okay? We are at a stop sign on a hill. There is nowhere for anybody to come from. And out of nowhere, someone starts banging on the window. Help me, help me, help me. Literally screaming. Here's the fuck out of me and my Uber and we look at each other. See, he's better than me because he got off the car. I rolled my window down. Tell me why there was nobody there. I wouldn't have done that. In the building that. that I used to live in, Neither several one of people that. have allegedly taken their own life. Lives. The amount of times that my sheets would be pulled off of my body in my bed. Forks thrown at me, papers flying. And it ain't just the ghosts you gotta be scared of, it's the people alive too. This woman used to stand outside my window, okay? Hold on, bro. We just gonna go past the fact that you said a ghost was in your house pulling sheets off of you and forks and throwing plates at you? Okay. She put butter in a sock. I, I kid you not, this is not iCarly. This really happened. Anytime somebody went by on a bike, whack. Anytime somebody walked by, whack. Try to drive your car past her, she's gonna smash your window in. I have almost been pulled into several people's cars. While waiting for Ubers or, you know, walking around, I have been grabbed by random men and they would start literally like kissing me up my arm, on my cheek. There's a museum of death. I don't know why I went in there, but I did. And I'm pretty sure something followed me out. Let me not even get into the shit that I saw at this party. While looking for the bathroom, I opened up a door I shouldn't have. And I saw some shit that I shouldn't have. And I genuinely wish I could erase it from my memory. And the only way I got out of that situation was pretending that I was high and drunk and acted like I didn't see anything. The things that I was offered in exchange for money and fame. 
I'm sure some of y'all hear about, you know, the satanic shit that happens out in Hollywood allegedly, and some of y'all probably think, oh, it's probably just like a joke or like a rumor. People that you wouldn't even expect to be involved in that stuff are involved. The amount of times that I would witness literal children in adult spaces, lifestyle that you see a lot of these IG models and Instagram famous people living, you think all these girls are funding these expensive lifestyles? Uh, nah, they going to Dubai. With a Taco Bell sponsor? That ain't their only sponsor. I understand why all these movies try to make Hollywood look like this glamorous place. There's over 50,000 homeless people in Los Angeles. And that's probably not counting everybody. I got DM'd by somebody that I guess you can consider a celebrity. When I got there, I wasn't the only girl there. And the first thing that I was told by one of the other women, Oh, is it your first time too? The second those words left her mouth, I left. I don't even want to know what that meant. And I was told that it was just going to be us, so I don't know what I was about to get into, but I'm glad I left. I'm running out of time, but I have a ton more stories. Y'all want them? Um... I'm not gonna lie, at one point in time I wanted to move to Los Angeles. I wanted to be a part of Hollywood, but I'm good. I mean, I live in Atlanta, so I live in black Hollywood. And I haven't really seen too much... I haven't seen nothing crazy. Probably like the gay dudes walking around and stuff like that. I had to get used to like the the level of uh, flamboyancy out here. But, you know, that's about it. The the craziest thing I've probably seen was going to uh no, I've experienced some some wild stuff before. You know what I'm saying? Um <laughs> I've experienced some wild stuff before. It was one time me and my me and my wife was coming from uh was coming from dinner and uh I had my Mustang. That's when I had my Mustang. Some of y'all who've been on the channel for a while, yeah, I remember my white Mustang. So I had my Mustang, we driving, and this this transvestite came up to the car and was like, hey, uh, shoot, man, I, I fucked both of y'all. And I ain't, that shit caught me off guard. I ain't I ain't had my gun on me, so you know what I'm saying? I ain't want to do or say nothing crazy, because this, this dude was probably, was, this nigga was probably like 6'7", bro. 6'7", swole as hell. In a mini skirt outside and a, a blonde wig, and he had a freaking uh, crop top. I was just like, "Hey, bro," and I just drove off. <laughs> you feel me? I think that's probably one of the craziest things I I've really experienced out here. I've been to a Gary V party, and um, probably I've seen some of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life at a Gary V party. The one thing I could say is like, they all looked like they were looking for people that had money. So I wasn't on the menu. You feel what I'm saying? But as far as crazy things, I haven't really experienced the type of shit she talking about. But I'm I'm pretty sure it's out here. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's out here. I just don't, I don't put myself in them type of situations. Like, I'm good with my YouTube money. I'm good with having a, a, a regular job. I, I have had uh, opportunities to make more money as far as YouTube, but I just didn't take it, and I probably wouldn't take it because I feel as though then I would be telling y'all stories like she's telling y'all. But anyway, it's today's video. Uh, make sure you like. Make sure you share. And I'm probably going to do a playlist so like y'all could binge watch the videos instead of having to go search for them. Excuse me. So, uh, just, you know, watch out for the playlist. Squad.